life, love, and pop pop culture. Hello guys, my name is Danielle Delgado and you're watching Life, Love, and Pop Culture. Today I'm taking you on the set of Lucifer. Take a look. Well, I mean, I've never gotten this far in the process in the States in terms of multiple seasons and, and so it's really nice because you always get to a point where, you know, if something's been cancelled or if you've only just done a pilot or something, there's a hunger to sort of tell more of the story. And um, now it feels like, I wouldn't say we're in a comfort zone, but uh, it just feels like we're able to tell our story and keep doing that. And, and the more characters that we've introduced, the more fun we can have because we can start cross-pollinating these characters and, and doing more with them. And the fact that our audience have really sort of um, run with it and, and embraced the show the way they have has been, has been rather wonderful. I feel very lucky as an actor as well to kind of have so many opportunities to do different things in one show. Uh, I think, you know, one of, one of my standout moments, and I, all, I will always remember it as a standout moment on any job I've ever done, was, and it was the piano duel that I did with Father Frank in um, Priest Walks Into a Bar. Uh, I, I can't tell you why specifically, but it was partly to do with Coleman Domingo. We just became really good friends doing that, that episode. And, um, we both have a love of music, um, and music is a kind of universal language. And the fact that we were able to, in a show like this, have a scene with not really much talking in it, and you were able to bond over something like that, and that was something that we, as, as actors, we were able to do, and as the characters. It was just a really kind of, I really, I smiled for a long time after that scene. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun this year with, um, with mixing our characters up, and our character dynamics, and introducing people to different people. You know, I'm really excited about what we're doing with Trisha this year. Um, you know, and it's been a real challenge for her as an actress to kind of um, to, to play someone else, but not play someone else. Um, uh, so just just the overall, you know, the overall feeling of uh, we're onto something here as a show, you know, and we feel confident about where we're at, and and being able to just play with that and and feel confident that people will respond to it. Uh, in season three, uh, I think he's he's trying to hold on to uh, his sense of faith. I think he's trying to take it, take it deeper, to try to understand um, more why he lost his powers. Uh, now, I think the revelation that he's God's favorite son probably helps. You know, uh, I think it restores his ability to have a stronger faith in himself and and, and his father. Um, but I think he's still he's still in some turmoil. I think he's just chosen the path of optimism and uh, chosen to have more faith and hope this season. And we'll see where that takes him. We'll see if that's successful. Uh, I think the most exciting thing is um, the different pairings that they have. Um, I'm starting off this season. I you know had one or two scenes with uh, Amenadiel did with Ella Lopez, Lopez. Um, and uh, I mean, Amy's just—I mean, she's just fantastic to work with. So uh, you know, we 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 had a lot of fun. Um, and they've also repaired. Uh, I met a deal with Dr. Linda, and so they really start um, a very very real and and nice friendship. Uh, and so we're going to see what happens to that friendship when our favorite demon comes back. Um, after Leslie and after giving birth to her beautiful son. Uh, but we're going to see what happens when, when she comes back and her ex-boyfriend and her best friend are now friends. Um, what drew me to my character is I loved that she understood that she could see something in Lucifer that nobody else could see and that he recognized that. And I thought, oh, that's an interesting dynamic. I liked that she was taking the most irredeemable person, thing, entity, whatever on earth, and finding that that we were going to try to explore even the most irredeemable person having redemption. Because I feel like every person on this earth, no matter what you've done, you can make an amends, and you can right things, and you deserve love. And I think that's an important message that we can't hear enough. And so that that was great. So that's what drew me to her. Um, and I really did just love the idea of being a therapist. I've been on the other side of the couch so many years. 
um, it starting in my 20s. So I was like, oh, I, 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 I know how to play this part. I know how to play this role. But then I like that she was also complicated and flawed, that she ends up having sex with the devil. Like that's pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty unethical. You know, so I liked that she was flawed. I like that everybody in the show is really flawed and that everyone's just struggling to do their best. Those are the things that are interesting to me. I don't, I like seeing, look, if I want to see like unreality, I'll watch a reality show, right. you know? Like if I want to see the not the truth and just like ridiculousness, I'll watch like Bachelor in Paradise, which I absolutely love. And all the Bachelor, Bachelorettes. I love it. Like that for me is like turn off the TV. But but like for if I want to be really moved and questioned, I'll watch our show or I'll watch like Handmaid's Tale. Ah, uh, see where you left off, season two with uh, Dan having a bit of a broken heart because uh, the real Charlotte is now here to our world and we pick up with that. Um, and uh, you get to see him sort of try to figure out why she doesn't recognize him and, uh, or remember whatever relationship that they, that they had. Um, but within that, they also kind of heal together. So you get to determine, you know, you will figure out later throughout the season whether or not the real Charlotte Richards can actually have the same sort of uh, intimate relationship with Dan. Um, so the struggle, there is a little bit of a struggle to find new and interesting things to do, um, just to give them more levels of, of creativity and, 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 and you know, characteristics. Um, but it's also part of the challenge that we all like to do as actors is you know, try to find something or a characteristic or a human quality that people can relate to. to I'd like to uh, dive a little bit more into where he came from. You know, nobody really knows where he came from. Um, and, what, you know, how he's become this sort of tightly wound human being. You know, because I mean, we don't we don't start off that way. So there's got to be a reason behind it. I'd love to figure out what that is. We'll get to know more about Ella's family, as we know she has an abuelita who taught her how to pick locks. Her brothers Ooh. taught her how to steal cars. Her one brother is obviously a criminal, as we know from last year. We're going to meet another brother. So we're starting to expand Ella's family. She comes from Detroit, from humble beginnings. And we learn just more and more tidbits about her. Um, I, I say she's, you know, such an interesting little character that just when you think you know her, all of a sudden you're like, oh, not only does she speak Klingon and Spanish and English, she speaks French. So they've really, the writers have really let me do that. Whenever they're talking about the Eiffel Tower, I'll be like, mais ah, j'aime les hommes, sont très romantiques et sexy. And, and the writers, you know, let me play with that. And then, you know, we have such an international fan base that the fans in, in France love it. And they're like, oh my God, you're speaking our language. And I'll, I'll throw in a little Spanish in there, you know, especially if she's talking on the phone with her family. So um, I, think, I think she'll just continue being a very relatable character. Um, Still no love interest for Ella, which I actually really like. Um, I think there's very few women on TV who don't lead with their sexuality. And what I love about Ella is she's in her own lane. She's not self-conscious. She's a woman of faith. She's a woman of science. And she's not defined by a romantic relationship. She's just defined by her work, her faith, and her family. And I think, like our showrunner Ildi said, that if you are just comfortable in your skin and you embrace your quirks, she's clumsy, she talks a lot, but if you own it, then it inspires other people to own their quirks. And that's why I think that she's become such a, such a beloved character, because she's not the coolest girl in the room, but, you know, a lot of us are. Life, love, and pop, pop culture. If you enjoyed my interview, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to look out for new videos every Wednesday.